welcome back to War Tales. Now having completed a playthrough of the game, I thought it might be useful or beneficial to provide a simple guide to beginners or players new to the game on key concepts or things to know about when starting a new game. So without further ado, let's get it started. When you select a new game, you're provided with a prompt to choose your destiny. Now the first one you have to select is what your backstory will be, and you have five options. Each of these options gives you a different starting bonus, and also your starting companions are different. For example, in this first option, where it's about apprentice friends looking for an adventure, my starting companions are a swordsman, archer, ranger, or a brute. In the second option, where it's about men escorting merchants who lost their employer, my starting companions are a swordsman, a warrior, a spearman, or a brute. What I'm going to do for this guide is I'm going to select the first option, hit next. Now you then get to select what their additional bonuses are. Are they used to long walks, or are they cunning fighters, and so on and so forth. And you have basically five options. Just one thing to bear in mind, these options can change depending on which backstory you've chosen. So let's say for example, I can see that I have the option of quick learners, which essentially increases the experience gained for profession by 10%. If I select bandits looking to escape the guard as my backstory, the option is now changed to companions having a gift for petty theft, which reduces the submission meter 15% during a theft. So just be mindful, whatever you choose as a backstory does change the options here. And not only these options, but it also changes the options in the flaw section. So you can't always have the good stuff, you also have to choose what flaws you start with, or a debuff. Again, five options, and they're all different. I'm just going to choose the first one, which is decreases my companion's carrying capacity by one. Once you've determined your backstory and your destiny, you get to choose what type of exploration you want to undertake. Is it adaptive, or is it region locked? The easier of the two, to be honest, especially if you're starting out, is region locked, because each region as a set difficulty from the start, so you know what you need to do in order to progress, or if you think that region's difficulty is too high, you might want to then go to another region, which allows you to progress at a more consistent pace. Adaptive is that the difficulty of all regions adapts dynamically to your group size and your unit's power, so it will always give you a challenge because it matches what your, I guess, your power level is compared to region locked. My recommendation? If you're new to the game, or if you're not very experienced in the genre, start out with region locked exploration. You'll then be brought to your starting option section. And here, you get to choose your starting region. Now, if you have not completed a playthrough, you only have one choice, which is Tiltrin County. But once you've completed a playthrough, you actually have additional options depending on which regions you've unlocked. In my case, because I've completed a playthrough of the whole game, I have two other options, Virtuous Province and County of Arthez. And I'm just going to choose Tiltrin County. Once you've selected your starting region, if you have a choice, you can then select your combat difficulty and survival difficulty. Don't be ashamed to just select novice or experienced if you are still new to the genre or if you think you, there's still a lot of things to learn about the game. The last aspect is safe mode. And you have three options, which is free, limited, and Iron Man. Free mode is essentially that you can save any time you want, as many saves as you want. Limited, you've only got one save, but you can go back in time to certain checkpoints like the last village or the beginning of the battle. Or Iron Man, if you've watched my season one series, I chose this option and basically I only have one chance. If all my companions died, or if the NPC that I'm helping dies that cannot die, and that person dies, it's game over. I have to start the game from scratch. So for the purpose of this game, I'm just going to choose novice, novice, and free. Having selected all your starting options, you then come to your companion page. Now here, you can do a few things. So aside from the obvious way you can change the name and you can change their appearance, you can also change what skills they start up with. Lamb, if that's his pronunciation, you can change a starting weapon. It can either be a single-handed sword, or if you click on here, the arrow, 
it becomes a two-handed sword. Now you also notice, by changing his starting weapon, it changes his starting skill. As a two-handed weapon, he starts with cleave. But if it's a single-handed weapon, he starts with slice. The other thing that you can also change is the utility skill. Now, the utility skill options that you have available depends on the class. As a swordsman, he has three options. They all have three options, but his three options are first aid, taunt, and wrath. If I were to go to Hypard, who's an archer, his utility is first aid, aim, and run. Now if I were to go to Kornik, who's a ranger, he has run as well, but then he has wrath and first aid. So they all always have first aid, but you get to choose what the other two other skills are. You can only choose one utility skill, you can't choose more than one, so just be mindful of that. The other thing you can do in your companions page is you can determine what their positive traits are. You can have up to two positive traits. So in this case, let's say if I go with Bloodthirsty, it increases their crit hit by 3%. And I choose, I want them to be nimble, so Dexterity is increased by 5%. But because I chose two positive traits, I have to choose, I have to have a negative trait. Now, I don't have to choose the negative trait, I can make it random, or I can choose one. Okay, now if you choose only one positive trait, you don't have to choose a negative trait. Okay, so there's pros and cons, if you want two or one, so I'll leave that up to you. So once you're done with that, you can then start your game. Don't forget, before you start, also check your pony, if there's anything you want to change with their traits, animals, um, horses, ponies, they can be used either uh, in battle or they can also be used more as a support character in terms of carrying your items or ensuring you have a bigger, bigger bag or bigger inventory. Once you're happy with everything, be free to start the game. War Tales is a concept called Professions, and in the game there are 10 professions. Miner, Woodcutter, Bard, Scholar, Angler, Blacksmith, Alchemist, Thief, Cook, and Tinkerer. Each of these professions will give your companion different bonuses to the attributes. The higher level the profession is, the higher the bonuses are. For example, Thalmati, he is a novice blacksmith. Now before progressing to the highest level, which is Master, his next progression will be Apprentice, followed by Experienced, and then Journeyman before finally becoming a master. So as a novice, the additional attribute point he gets is one strength. If I look at Captain de Gwena, as a master blacksmith, the additional attribute point is actually 10, not one. Additionally, she has access to all blueprints in relation to the blacksmith profession and can craft all types of equipment as it relates to the profession. The other thing to know is if you want to swap professions, you can. That's not a problem. So if I look at Hahim, he's a mass, he's a journeyman blacksmith. So far, he's gained 31 experience points in his progress to become a master. I have now run of cooks. I need a cook. So let's say Hahim, I want you to be a cook. That's fine. Let's select him. You get this warning that says Hahim will lose all experience gain as a blacksmith journeyman. That's not a problem. We say okay. So you can see he starts off as a novice cook. Let's say further along the line we say, oh no, actually I made a mistake, I need him to be a blacksmith now. We can select and we can swap him and he's now, he retains his level of a journeyman, but his experience points as a journeyman now resets to zero. The other thing I'd like to mention is when you start a new game, you don't actually start out with all 10 professions. The only reason you see all 10 here is because I'm in a safe where I've completed the game and I've unlocked every single profession. When you start a new game, the only profession you have unlocked is the Tinkerer. So the question is, how do you unlock the rest? Well, that's a great question. Let me show you how. In this save, I'm in a salt mine. And in this mine, I'm planning to unlock two professions. But you can see, just to show you, this is a new game. And the only profession I've unlocked is Tinkerer, which is the default profession that is available. So how do I unlock the two other professions? If I look at this iron ore node, and there are two nodes, it allows me to pick it up. So I'm going to right-click, and it now shows that there is a new profession, Miner. 
And it's going to ask me to select a miner, but because I didn't already have one of them assigned as a miner, they're all grayed out. So what can I do? Cancel. Find the profession, the uh, companion that I want to be a miner. In this case, I'll get Alert as a swordsman. Left click on his badge and now select the miner profession. The other profession I'd like to unlock is the thief. Again, similarly, you have to interact with the world components that would indicate you need a thief. In this case, I see a bag that I can inspect. I see goods in it, but these goods belong to Foreman Selikin. What I can do is I can steal them. So if I hit steal, I now unlock the profession of thief. Again, same thing, it asked me to select a thief, but because I didn't have that unlocked previously, I just have to cancel. I'll select Drakram, left click on his badge, and now make him my thief. So that's how you unlock your profession. Now, all professions will require you to play some sort of mini game in order to level up your profession or as you interact with the world. So for example, to mine, I right click on this iron ore, I select Olert, who is my miner, and this is the mini game. So in this mining mini game, you just have to align the moving circle with the static circle so that it is green. There you go. The other thing to note is you won't necessarily fail as such unless you don't align it properly. I'll show you what I mean. So if I align this, not a problem. Now they will appear on different sides of the screen. And let's say, oh wait, I messed up. I couldn't get to this in time. That's fine. You see, it doesn't say you fail straight away. You get another chance. There you go. And that's it about professions. In War Tales, you will be battling a lot. And the battle format for War Tales is turn-based. Before you start a battle, there are a few things that will be good to know that will summarize what's happening on the battlefield. Firstly, at the top, it tells you the number of allied units you have. Just bear in mind, sometimes this includes NPCs that are on your side, so it doesn't always only represent how many companions you have. On the right side is the number of enemy units. This is good to know, in this case there are three, because the loaded screen only shows me two, so I know that I need to look out for the third one. And here he is. The bar in the middle is just the morale meter. This morale meter will fill up the more enemy units you kill. And as you fill it up, you can trigger one of two boosts sequentially. The first one is Galvanize. When your troops hit this threshold, basically they'll be galvanized and they boost the damage they deal. The second one is basically you overwhelm your opponents. Basically you're too strong and they say, okay, yep, I had enough. I'm going to raise the white flag and I'd like to flee. You don't have to let them flee. You can choose to kill them all. But it allows you to basically end the battle earlier. The next couple of things will help in devising your strategy or executing your battle strategy. Firstly, you need to know what your turn order is. And this is represented by the series of icons down on the left here. The enemy units are the ones with an image of them with a red background. As I hover over them, I can see who's going to go next. In this case, it's Vidanon first, Hoodlum, and then Poacher. Now, one thing to know, Poacher's off screen, so you're like, okay, so... I need to move it this way? Not necessarily, I don't necessarily need to move the map. I can just left click on this image and it'll center around him. The other way you can tell who's next on the team, who's immediately next, is by this icon, which is an exclamation mark within the triangle, which is telling me Vidanon will move next within their team. What about your team? What about your companions? They are represented by the blue icons with a double sword. So why is not it have an image of your companions? That's because more tales does not dictate who has to go first in your team. You get to dictate that as part of your strategy. Once everyone's taken their turn, it will be the end of the round and you start the next round assuming everyone is still alive. Another thing to note as part of strategy is sometimes the enemies will have a leader. And this leader is represented by an icon where they have a helmet with two horns, a red helmet with two horns, as you can see here. What leaders do is they provide a buff to their companions, in this case leaders aggression. They increase critical hit chance by 20%. So everyone, the hoodlum, has this buff. The poacher has the buff. So if it's possible in your battle strategy, you might want to consider taking out the leader first to get rid of the buff that his companions have. Another thing to note, on the battlefield, you have things that you can interact with. For example, there is a snow iris. 
here. In this case, if your ally is dying, they can go to the snow areas and heal themselves to gain 10% of their max health. Or alternatively, if they're not dying, but they have poison, bleeding, or burning, they can consume the snow iris on the battlefield and it removes those debuffs. There are also interactables like this spear throw, where if the enemy is standing within this range of this spear, your commanders can come up to here and you will have the ability to then use this spear to deal damage without consuming any of your actions, aside from your movement action. The last thing I'd like to touch upon before starting a battle and simulating a battle is you have valor points to assist you in your battle. So what are valor points? Valor points are basically points that you can use to use certain skills, additional skills, alongside your base action. So for example, Laura. He has the base skill of Pound. He also has the Weakening Blow skill. And you can see that there is a diamond icon which means that this skill will consume a valor point. So if I were to move Laura to, let's say the Hulam, he's the only one within range. Here, I can undertake my base action, Pound. I can also then undertake another action, but this will consume a valor point. We can think below, as you can see, I have two. I undertake one. I only one, have one left. Now I'm just gonna let the enemy move. There's another thing I would like to show you. Certain skills that your companions choose, I suppose. For example, in this case, Fredenor, the archer, has chosen Valor support from his skill tree. Essentially, every time this unit ends their turn next to an ally and is not engaged in combat, you gain one Valor point. Now, why is this yellow and not orange? That's because any Valor points you gain during combat is only temporary, which means after combat, you don't get to keep the Valor points. This orange Valor point, let's say we do not spend it, after the battle, we will still have one Valor point that we can use for the next battle, assuming we don't rest. So I'll show you how we can recover one temporary Valor point. So it says stand next to an ally and don't be engaged in combat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot maybe, yeah, I'm going to use one Valor point, aim, shoot the hoodlum, and then stand next to alert. And if I end my turn, I've gained one yellow temporary valor point. In order to hire human commandants to join your ever-expanding troop, you can head to any town. In this case, I am in Stromkrop, as you can see, and visiting the tavern. Once in the tavern, you notice that there are a few people sitting down, and you can either right-click to inspect or talk to them. So I normally just right-click. And that tells me, for example, this person is available for hire, is a brute, and these are their traits and their skills. You can go through each and every one of them just to check. And when you're ready to hire, let's say I'm ready to hire Iridis, left click, and you have the option of recruiting. And this will cost 40 influence points and 80 crowns. Another way of hiring human companions for your troop is by visiting a jail in any region that you're in. The benefit of hiring someone from jail is they do not cost any influence points, just crowns. In War Tales, aside from human companions, you can also have animal companions by capturing them, and you capture them during battle. Before capturing them, you need to satisfy three conditions. The first condition is you need to reduce their health to a level low enough for you to successively capture them. So in this case, I have reduced the wolf's health level from 12 to 5. The other condition is I cannot be the one engaged in battle. So for example, Laura cannot capture the wolf because Laura is engaged with wolf. As such, I'm using Drakram, who is not engaged, and when I approach wolf, you'll see, okay, this option now comes out. I can now knock out the wolf and capture him. The third condition that you'll need is, as you can see in this skill at the bottom, it says it requires rope. So in order to capture animals, you need rope. Not all animals require just one rope. Some animals, as you progress along the story, will need more than one rope. So just be aware of that. So now I can actually go ahead and capture. And you'll see 
the success rate is only 56% because his health level is just under half. If I'm able to reduce the health level even more, the success rate goes up. So let's give this a go. In this case, even though it was 56%, I managed to capture the wolf. And that's how you capture an animal to be your animal companion. In War Tales, there are two types of quests. One are scenario quests, and the other are side quests. Now, scenario quests on your world map is represented by this purple circle. Or, when you're interacting with NPCs, they're represented by NPCs with a purple outline. Now, on the map, you know definitely aside from the color that it corresponds to the scenario quest, also because there's this symbol that aligns to this bar or meter to show your progression of scenario quests in each region. As you can see, the icon here is a cloth bag tied to a stick, which is the same to this one. Side quests, on their hand, are represented by exclamation marks at points of interest that you've discovered. So you can see that I have a few here that I can then complete. Now, War Tales is a very open-ended game. You do not necessarily have to complete the scenario quest or the side quest in any particular order, or necessarily to complete it in order to venture a different region. However, by completing it, you do get some benefits, and I'm sure you will discover them in time. War Tales is a survival game as well. Aside from winning battles, you will need to ensure your troops are well fed, whether they are human companion or they are animal companion, and that your hum human companions are paid a wage. What happens if you don't complete any of them? It impacts your happiness. And depending on the level of happiness, you may get a negative outcome or you may get a positive outcome. If it's negative 5 happiness, a companion will want to leave your troop. Conversely, if you're at 7 happiness, you will get one additional maximum valor point. At 15 positive happiness, your experience gained in combat is increased by 15%, and anything above 15 happiness grants you 5 influence points per happiness point. So, where do I get food? Two places. You can either get it in the wild, so you can forage for mushrooms, you can fish, or conversely, you can head to a town and head to the market and hit find any of the vendors and buy the food. I understand it. What about crowns? What do I do with crowns? How do you earn crowns? You can earn small amounts by completing scenario quests or side quests, but the best way in early game is to complete bounties. Where do you get bounties? Bounties are obtained through the tavern, and you'll see an emissary. If you left click on the emissary, in this case, I have completed a few bounties, which would have given me 410 crowns, so I will collect the, the two of them. And if I review these, these are the bounties that are available for me to undertake and accept, and these are the rewards. So those are the things that you'll need to do, aside from battling, in order to survive in War Tales. War Tales is a concept called knowledge, and you gain knowledge by accumulating knowledge experience. Knowledge experience is accumulated by certain actions you take in the world. For example, discovering new points of interest, or getting your scholar to re restore artifacts, or crafting items for the first time. Every knowledge point you gain can be then spent in your compendium. All these things will enhance your gameplay in War Tales, and they're basically split up into five categories. Knowledge, Workshop, Anvil, cooking pot, and apothecary. When you start off in the game, you will only have access to knowledge and workshop. That's because knowledge is just general knowledge, but the workshop is related to the profession tinkerer, as you can see with the same emblem. You will open up the other four when you come across the other professions. So, so in this case, blacksmith for the anvil, a cook for the cooking pot, an alchemist for the apothecary, and a scholar for the rooms. Let me show you quickly what it looks like at the beginning of the game. In this save mode, you'll see that I've only accumulated one knowledge point, which I can spend in this compendium, which is signified by this exclamation mark here. Now you can see I've only unlocked two because I don't have the other professions. I only have a tinkerer profession, and I don't have the blacksmith, alchemist, cook, or even scholar. But it allows me to then spend the point on certain things that will make life easier for me in the game. For example, I can learn run. That will enable me to move faster around the map. 
So if once you gain knowledge points, I would suggest have a look and see what you want to spend on, how you want to dictate your gameplay, and how you want to make it more fun for yourself. Another useful thing to know if you're new to the game is if you hover off this top left icon with your number of troops, it gives you a summary of all the bonuses that you have currently applicable to your troop members. As you get further along the game, you'll find that you'll get more and more bonuses you may lose track of, but anytime you want to just check a quick summary, you can always hover over this and this will give you that. The last thing I'd like to touch upon in the game is the concept of paths. As you can see here, there are four paths. First one, power and glory. Second, trade and craftsmanship. Third, crime and chaos. And lastly, mysteries and wisdom. Now, paths is interesting. It is just basically your way on how you want to tell your story or what kind of story you want to pursue. Now, you don't have to complete them in isolation of each other. The way it progresses is based on actions you take in more details. Once you've completed any of these paths, now I won't tell you how you're going to complete them, but once you do, the credits will start rolling. That is, I guess, a way to signify that your tale in War Tales has ended. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. War Tales is an open-ended game. You can close the credits and continue playing for as long as you want, until you reach the point where you're saying, this is the end of my tale. This is the end of my journey in War Tales. Until then, have fun, and I hope you enjoy. Bye.